Hi, uh, welcome, and uh, thank you very much for the uh, invitation to come and uh, speak today about a topic that has absorbed a lot of my uh, uh, research uh, this past year, and uh, uh, basically focuses on how it is we should assess and optimize uh, player statistics. Uh, this does somewhat track some of the articles I've been writing at Baseball Prospectus, but I will assure you uh, I am not just going to read a paper to you. Uh, that is very boring. So I have rearranged some of the material and focused on uh, the issue that I think is actually by far the most interesting, uh, which is not exactly about a particular statistic per se, but it's about how we develop one and how we might look at whether that statistic is actually meaningful. So the start of this story actually was when we at Baseball Prospectus had decided that we wanted to consider overhauling a statistic uh, called true average, which seemed to work reasonably well, um, but had the minor problem that no one actually used it. And so, in the course of trying to figure out what to do about that, I actually stumbled upon a more fundamental problem, which was that if we were gonna go about um, working on a new statistic, how would we know whether it was useful or just another piece of alphabet soup that wouldn't really accomplish much? And that is actually kind of a, a difficult issue. Um, essentially, uh, if you want people to use something, and if you want to use people's time wisely, you should be giving them something useful. Um, but it is hard to know uh, sometimes whether you've actually done that. So we actually spend a fair amount of time just focusing on asking that question. Um, if one batting statistic was actually more accurate than another, um, how would we know? Um, and as I say here, I, I know this happens uh, inside teams, it happens in research organizations, it certainly happens within BP. Someone comes running up to say, well, virtually no one actually sees each other, but, and says, you know, I've found X and I've put this together and I think it's really cool. And someone will say, well, that's great, but what does it do? Well, it tells you this. Okay, um, what am I gonna do with that? Uh, well, you, you could use it to do this, you could use it to do that. Is it better than what I'm using right now? Well, I don't know, kind of. Um, it, it's somewhat predictive, it, it kind of keeps showing up. And, and you kind of go back and forth sometimes asking yourself, is this in fact uh, useful? And so what we wanted to talk about was, when is a statistic worth your time? And for me, the, the process of developing this was, to say what are the ways that we have been actually developing statistics and agreeing on them to date, and then to kind of see if we could take that intuition and sort of formalize it into something that we could then use to keep developing more statistics along the same lines. So if we start with batting statistics, um, this is a fairly well-developed sequence of events that people in this room don't need to hear a whole lot about. Um, the development and acceptance of statistics is certainly very nonlinear, but uh, certainly batting average was popular for a long time before on-base percentage uh, became more, uh, more prevalent or at least more accepted among analysts. We have batting average with a very limited number of events considered and all events weigh the same. We then have on-base percentage in which more events are considered, but all events are still weighted the same. Uh, we have slugging percentage in which different events have different estimated values. Uh, we then get to OPS when some insightful people said that both uh, on-base percentage and slugging percentage had some shortcomings, so why not both? And then finally, uh, we get to a point where weighted on-base average is at least popularized by the book, which is a certainly a well-known uh, uh, book uh, on baseball statistics, and uh, basically says, why don't we just try to use real run values rather than some of these sort of estimates of bases and things. And what I notice here is that there is a progression. We are slowly appreciating different things about these statistics. And so what was the intuition that I think everyone was having? Uh, the first thing was we liked the fact that a statistic was more comprehensive. 
So there are more OBP events than batting average events. That's good, we want to account for those. The second thing that we wanted to know was we wanted to focus on relative values. So slugging was more valuable than on base percentage in that sense because uh, we were accounting for more and relative values were being preserved. And then finally, we get to the point where uh, weighted on base average says it's really about being accurate to the run scoring. So in WOBA, we see that they attempt to translate linear weights onto the OBP scale. Uh, I think that, for the most part, succeeds. Um, and OPS uh, is addressed by the book also, um, but it talks about how it is uh, less accurate and that it undervalues OBP. So if we're going to unify these concepts, we want to be comprehensive, so we cover a wide range of events. We want to be explanatory, so we account for actual run values. And then finally, we want to be accurate. We want our individual components to be as accurate as possible, usually using linear weights or some combination of actual events. So how do we combine those together? One option that we've largely been using is to focus on using raw results. So when you go to a leaderboard and you use pretty much any of these statistics I've already mentioned, what you're looking at are summaries of raw outcomes. Uh, this is fairly easy to do. You assign run values and you count in some way or another. I don't think, however, that's what we're really looking for. I think what we're looking for is the batter's contribution. And there are a few reasons for this. One is that mere outcomes do not equal contributions. I don't need to tell this room that. Uh, certainly, batters deserve much of the credit for what they do, but they don't necessarily deserve all of it. There are too many factors. There are too many things going on during a play. There is simply too much annual variance. So I would propose that the goal is to get the batter's expected contribution on average, which is something that tends to show up uh, fairly consistently. And it is important to focus on these contributions because otherwise leaderboards get treated as contributions when in fact, again, generally they are merely summaries of outcomes. So how do we decide what those ought to be? Um, we look at three different things. And I, I will say that these don't have to be the ones that you would consider to be the most relevant, but they are the ones that seem to keep popping up when we would ask what had value. And what we're trying to look at, of course, is for this contribution that is made. It is what stat statisticians would call a latent quantity in the sense that it is never directly observed. We don't know, you know, there, so people don't walk around with a sign that says, you know, I'm this quality of player. We have to sort of infer it. And so we also have uh, this way of sort of taking a balance between what I would call competing forces. And the three sort of competing forces that I find seem to be constantly showing up in statistical questions are, number one, how well does the method explain this year's results? Number two, how well does the method explain next year's results? And finally, how consistently does the method measure the player? Of these three, I think the third one is the most important, and I will tell you why. It's a bit like stepping on your bathroom scale. Uh, no matter how depressing the number is that is reported to you, you expect it to be consistent. The first order of any measurement is to be consistent. If you step on a scale and it tells you one number, of, say 200 pounds, and then it's 220 pounds five minutes later, that's not a very reliable measurement. So reliability is, of these three, the one that I consider to be the most important. The three categories that we have then would be, and again, somewhat clumsy names, they're the best that I could think of. Descriptiveness, how well does a batting metric explain runs scored this year? Second, predictiveness, how well does the batting metric explain runs scored next year? And finally, third, the reliability. How similarly does the batting metric rate the same players from year to year? And I use year to year as sort of a convenience measure because we tend to look at different seasons. This can be any measure of time that you want. You can care about different months, you can care about different ballparks, you can care about, well, you can care about whatever you like. 
Um, but the point is that these three competing objectives seem to constantly surround our assessment of how good a player is. So how do we decide and figure out whether a statistic meets these criteria? Uh, first, I think you have to start with team run scoring. Uh, this is a somewhat strange idea at first, but the problem with batters is that with the exception of a few, uh, few of them with extraordinary power, most uh, batting contributions are station to station ones. So at the end of the day, what we have, the only matchup we have with actual runs is how well teams of batters tend to do. So I, t I suggest focusing on team run scoring and then using some individual measurements as a way to sort of true that up. Um, slightly more technical issue, I suggest using correlations, not error numbers. Uh, the reason for this is that if you're comparing metrics, you're often dealing with things on different scales. So if you want to compare batting average to WOBA to WRC+, they're not all on the same scale. You have to find some common means of doing it. Correlations work fairly well. The third thing I suggest is margins of error. Um, you need to minimize spurious findings. You need to make sure that if you're going to take the time to measure something, that it's actually relevant. If the difference between two statistics is within the margin of error, chances are it's not worth the hassle of moving on to a new one. And the final point that I think is going to really be emphasized today is this. Look for superiority in all three categories, because that is something that unifies everything that I've talked about so far. You don't always have to do it that way, but the better the metric, the more likely it is that all three categories will be better. So let's start by looking at some well-known, generally accepted um, public baseball metrics for batters. You'll notice that we start on the bottom with batting average, and I have here the reliability, the predictiveness, the descriptiveness, and I apologize for the extra columns, but uh, the, stand, the margin of error for each one of those calculations. And as you can see, we start out with batting average at the bottom. We then go up to OBP, which is superior in all three categories. We then go up to WOBA, which is largely superior in at least two out of the three categories to OBP. And then, somewhat amusingly, we have OPS on top, um, basically being indistinguishable from WOBA within the margin of error. Um, both of them actually do really well. They tend to be fairly reliable, they tend to be pretty predictive, and they are certainly both extremely descriptive of team runs scored. Um, what about park adjustments? It's well known that stadiums can affect run production, some more extremely than others. We can use this same system to look at park adjusted metrics. What you have to accept, though, is that the numbers will be lower because you are basically saying with any park adjusted metric that many of these runs do not count. They, should, they are undeserved. So, however, that assumption hurts all metrics equally, so you can still use this to compare park-adjusted metrics. So let's look at three park-adjusted metrics, weighted runs created plus, OPS plus, and true average. These three are basically the same. Um, they perform very similarly. Uh, they are similarly reliable. Uh, their predictiveness and descriptiveness are also very similar. Uh, can we do better? Uh, yes, we can, now that we actually know what we're looking for. If we can establish superiority in all three categories over what we have uh, beyond the margin of error, we can optimize to that function and try to find something that is more explanatory. In this particular case, uh, we settled upon what we've decided to call um, DRC+, Deserved Runs Created, yes, another acronym, sorry, um, the DRC plus attributes of note that it is park, opponent, and strike zone adjusted. It's on the familiar 100 index scale. It goes back to 1921, and perhaps most importantly, it only requires retro sheet data. It does not require any new uh, measurements, even though those are always nice to have. So what happens when we optimize to this goal of um, being superior in all three categories? Um, we find that DRC plus is substantially more reliable than the existing park adjusted metrics, well outside the margin of error. We find that it is substantially more predictive, and we also find that it is more descriptive. 
The descriptive numbers, as you can see, are fairly close. Um, that's not surprising, I think. Um, but it is really with the reliability and the predictiveness that um, DRC Plus sort of starts to stand out from the crowd. So this is all, however, been team runs to date. And the problem with team runs is that they are noisy. And they also tend to favor certain metrics that might miss on the high side, like OPS. Um, so we probably want to make this at least a little bit more granular to try to get down to a sense of um, which metrics are truly better. And so let's take a really hard situation. Um, let's look at players who switched teams. And we'll limit it to 2010 to 2018, which is a brutal sequence of years for statistics. Um, we have the uh, league's run environment going back and forth. We have the changing ball. Um, it is extremely, extremely difficult to stay consistent over this time period. And you'll see that if we look at reliability, that uh, DRC Plus is um, standing out from the crowd. Um, it is substantially more reliable on the correlation. The margin of error is essentially zero. And if you look at reliability and the correlation from an R-squared standpoint, uh, DRC is accounting for over half of the variance in a batter's performance over the following season, simply from that one uh, season of data. There we go. Uh, what I also find interesting about this is that it kind of reinforces our vision of the uh, different tiers of statistics. At the bottom, we have true average, at batting average, and OBP. Um, then in the next tier up, you'll notice we have OPS and OPS plus. Then in the next tier up, we have WOBA and WRC plus, which are starting to show that increased accuracy that the book wanted us to know that they had. Um, however, there still is a huge jump before you get up to the DRC level of reliability, which again is the consistency with which it measures the same player from year to year. Predictiveness is another uh, very important metric that we try to balance here. And uh, as I talked about, and we once again have a series of tiers. How well does this metric predict um, WOBA in the following year? And you'll see at the bottom we have batting average, distinctively quite bad from the rest. Uh, OBP is a level up, then true average OPS and OPS plus, uh, once again in their own tier, WOBA and WRC plus, and then at the top, uh, DRC plus um, by itself uh, going over the 0.5 mark uh, in showing next year's uh, WOBA for an individual. So the StatCast uh, me measures are particularly interesting because they add the power of new inputs we did not have before. Uh, it's a major advance, it makes baseball more fun, it makes understanding what happens more fun. And I want to point out that on both the um, expected, expected batting average and expected weighted on base average, ex woba both of these numbers are better than any of the non-StatCast metrics I showed you before. So there's really no question that StatCast, with these superior inputs, is allowing sort of superior measurement and, and evaluation of players. Interestingly though, DRC Plus still manages using only retro sheet data to step above that and provide more reliability, uh, more descriptiveness, and more predictive power. Again, well outside the margin of error. So this seems to suggest that a combination of StatCast type inputs and DRC's methods would probably be beneficial. Um, that's probably something we'll be looking at this year since both obviously have a lot to bring. One thing that I think people then want to know is how does this affect um, you know, overall results? And I'm pleased to say that with respect to the very top batters, not a whole lot of difference, which is a bit of a relief. Uh, we are pretty sure who the good batters are. We really do not want them to abruptly change. And you'll see that there's a lot of similarity here. Um, I actually chose to compare DRC plus to 
WRC plus, because I think that's probably the park adjusted metric most in use at the moment. And uh, as you can see, they're very similar. But you do notice that there are some interesting effects once we start looking at how DRC plus views certain batters versus w, WRC plus. Um, here are the batters that DRC plus is much higher on than WRC plus. Uh, some of these you will notice are perhaps park effects. Uh, Colorado hitters are being given a little bit more of a break. Uh, there's at least one other trend here that I'm interested if, uh, if people spot in terms of the type of hitters that DRC plus seems to think are being somewhat uh, underrated. On the other hand, we have at the bottom the hitters that DRC Plus sees as being overrated. And again, uh, kind of running short on time, so I can't go through them all, but I'm once again curious as people look through these lists if they see certain attributes um, that seem to be uh, in common. So uh, in conclusion, what I want to say is our traditional intuitions are pretty darn good. So batting average up to OBP, uh, up to OPS, up to WOBA. People knew what they were doing when they understood and accepted that those were all improved and different. I would suggest that the contribution measures framework that I've laid out allows you to take that intuition, which I think is almost certainly correct, and uh, formalize it. And once you formalize it, you can optimize to it. Um, DRC plus maximizes the contribution measures performance for batters. Uh, the raw outcomes are always available as a check. I do want to encourage you always, even though I, I spent 20 minutes complaining about them, uh, there are batters who fall outside expectations of any model. All models are wrong uh, to some extent. So always do not be afraid to go back and see if someone is performing much differently than you would expect uh, to wonder why that might be. And uh, further gains, I think, are still theoretically possible if people continue to focus on contribution measures and optimize around them. And that's all that I have. What now? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. We did, um, and to be honest, I have not gone back and looked at that in a while. Um, I do believe that, um, if I recall correctly, uh, DRC Plus was more down on Trout early on, uh, and I would have actually believed that Cabrera was the year that he earned the triple crown was a, uh, was a better hitter overall. But since that time, uh, Trout has pretty clearly been at the top of the rankings virtually every year except when Bryce Harper had that one year. Any other questions? Yes, Meredith. See, I hate that word underrated or under, it's so judgmental. Um, the, uh, fair enough, okay. Um, so the, uh, I would say that um, DRC plus and the way that it applies linear weights um, it's more apparent, I would say, on the overrated, sorry, overvalued part. Um, hitters who derive a lot of their value from uh, singles hitting and, uh, and walks and lower value events, um, DRC tends to value a little bit lower. And whereas uh, your Joey Gallows, your other hitters who tend to uh, slug and hit for power, and I think some of that and I'll write about this probably in another month or so, has to do with the difference between how WOBA and DRC plus apply linear weights. Uh, but I think some of it also is just that um, hitters who really sell out for power are often seen by DRC plus as being slightly more valuable than they are under WRC plus. Sorry, I did not mean to create mystique. I was just trying to move along. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, thank you.